Hello friends. Today I would like to introduce you to the C25, which is our latest controller for shading Blackmagic cameras. We have made quite a few different models for doing exactly that. And um, recently we made a publication about Blackmagic camera topologies. So anything you want to know, if you are interested in setting up Blackmagic cameras, being it uh, a studio camera or Ursa Mini Pro, for uh, studio use, live production, and so forth. We have outlined numerous different ways you can cable it up, you can shade your cameras, connect it to ATEM switches or not, etc. There are so many examples, and we have come in contact with all these different ways people want to do it uh, through our customers, and finally put all this knowledge to, um, together in this small booklet. It's also available online uh, as a PDF file, and uh, you see it here on my screen. and um, in the back of this, I put up pictures of our four main categories of controllers. So you see the, the CCU is a multi-camera controller. You can see that from the camera selector right here. And then we have the RCP and RCP Mini. These are designed to fit into the rack space you normally find in OB vans and uh, be substitutes for um, classic RCPs that yeah fit into that space. They have the same kind of uh, connectors on the back and so forth, so they will immediately interface with your monitoring equipment and so forth. And now finally we have the C25. So why this one? Well, this controller is conceptually made to be used locally close to the camera. So while these products are all remote controls sitting maybe miles away from your camera, this one was thought to be used close to the camera. So you can imagine camera operator having it mounted with a clamp on a tripod handle, uh, or you can have a dedicated operator just next to being able to shade the camera without pushing and poking the touch screen with whatever um, that entails. Um, it could maybe even be a uh, steady cam operator. I don't know. But the point is you get local control with this small device. So, um, in this configuration, I'll just shortly hook it up with a Blackmagic uh, Micro Studio camera I have right here. But let's first take a look at the um, various features it has. So, in a moment, we'll see the displays uh, full of information. But until then, let's take a look at the backside. We have an SD out, uh, SDI out connector. This one will be connected to your camera. So, we'll do this. Then we have the SDI in. If we wanted the camera to be able to show any kind of return signal on the screen, the, the program view on a Blackmagic, micro st uh, Blackmagic Studio camera, for instance, then we would connect it here. We have a 12 volt DC plug uh, input, which is probably the one you would use if you connect cables on the top, because on the bottom you'll see we have also a 12 volt input uh, in case you want to use the controller with Ethernet. I'll get back to that. And then finally we have a USB port, which is good for upgrades and modifications to the controller. You also see we have some mounting holes here. You can put a, a small metal plate with a quarter inch thread so you can easily attach it to a clamp and so on. Okay, so I'll just put it up uh, here next to a monitor. This monitor shows the output from my Blackmagic uh, Micro Studio camera. You see uh, it is the... Um, uh, yeah, monitoring HDMI output so we can see all the settings and so forth. And uh, all I need to do now is to apply some power. So I'll find a DC power plug and apply it in the bottom. We shall see the controller boot. And now it's online. So what are we looking at? Well, first of all, we have iris control. And you saw uh, what happened was the camera was on aperture f10 and as I move this dial it's now going to 100% 100% is a normalized way of controlling iris in the Blackmagic um, camera control protocol and it basically pushes the iris all the way to the max uh, to the maximum opening and as I now turn this knob you can see I'm surely adjusting the iris of my camera uh, if you notice that it is a bit jumpy on the numbers, it is not because of this device. The resolution of this device is as high as the clicks you experience on this knob. So it's even higher than the percentage you see here. And surely the jumps you see is related to the optics of our camera 
having a stepping iris. So if you had a smooth iris on your lens, it would be different. And this is reported back from the lens. So it kind of makes sense. I'm just saying this because we hear some people having problems with uh, stepping iris and you should really be aware of your lens and make sure that it's not the lens uh, that has this problem. Now, next to the iris knob, we have master black. So as I turn this, you can see I'm affecting the black level of the picture. It's called lift Y in the Blackmagic universe. And then we have lift R, G and B up in the top. So as I turn this knob and I turn it quite a lot, then you'll see I'm applying more and more red in the black parts of the picture. And the significance of these knobs is decided by these buttons. This is basically a menu. So as I press this one, I'm now adjusting gamma, R, G and B. And I'm now adjusting gain, R, G and B. And then with the final knob, I'm adjusting detail, white balance and shutter speed of the camera. You also notice when you are at the fourth menu position, the camera is set to one. So it says camera one right there. And as I turn this knob, I'm now at camera two. You also see all the settings in the displays are changing. So what do you think happens now if I adjust the iris? Well, of course nothing because the camera was set up to ID one and I am pushing out data for camera two. So the camera doesn't react. I go back to camera one and of course it reacts to whatever I do. All right, so that makes sense, I guess. Um, now you may say, uh, is it really practical on a set that the operator could accidentally change the camera number? So he wouldn't have control over the camera. He could be confused. And that's totally true. So um, you can of course change this. Currently the controller runs on a default configuration. So buy a USB cable and putting that into the end of the controller here. And then using the Skahoy firmware application we have right here, you simply press the open configuration button and in a few seconds it will load up a web browser with the online information about the most recent configuration that you generated for your controller. You see it's the Blackmagic camera control via SDI. This is a default configuration uh, which uh, is currently the active one. And all you need to do to get rid of the camera selector on the uh, master black button is to um, basically find the button. This would be it. You press it and then you see here on the page that in all cases, lift, gamma and gain scenario, it will adjust the master black, the lift Y. But if we are in the fourth menu option, it will adjust the memory um, position A, which is the one we're using to select camera. And all I need to do is to basically remove that. So what I now told the controller is in case we are at memory position four, you should not allow us to select the camera. You should rather allow us uh, to control master black as we did so far. And all we need to do now is to save the setting, go to the firmware application, check for updates, and then in a few seconds, minutes, you will have a new software downloaded and installed on your controller that removes the camera selector function. Okay, so it's now done writing the firmware, verifying the firmware. We'll see the controller is rebooting. And there we go, we are ready. Camera selector works. If we go to the fourth menu option, you see there's no change in this function. It is now adjusting master black just as it is um, supposed to, according to what we just did. Now, um, there was also an, a different configuration we could have chosen. We could have uh, connected it to an ATEM switcher and um, we supply two, um, or at least at this point in time, there are two different default configurations you could choose between. So we now if we select the one for ATEM switcher, you see that we have an, a Blackmagic ATEM device core installed on the device instead. And um, what we want to do now is to see if we can connect to an ATEM switcher and use it for controlling cameras this way. Um, my ATEM switcher today would have um, this IP address, so I just make this change. 
And uh, that um, is all I need to do to now download a new firmware. And this firmware will have all the same features mapped to the buttons, buttons but it will rather try to um, control the camera through an ASIM switcher than directly over the SDI. So I can basically now take this cable out. Um, so basically I remove the SDI cable and then uh, I, I would plug this into the uh, program out of my ATEM switch, of course. Um, and then I would just reach down for a network cable because now we plug in the ethernet cable here in the bottom. All right. And then we're just waiting for the firmware to be upgraded. So now we see the controller reboot and we see that it's apparently now controlling iris for camera one and it should do so over the ethernet connection so how do we know that well that's kind of easy because all we need to do is to bring up the atom control for the switcher so this is my switcher i'm controlling and if we go here you can see we have all the cameras and here we have camera one so notice as i turn this knob I am changing the iris of camera one. You can see that in the software. If I press the knob for a more coarse resolution, you see this goes a little quicker. And likewise, I can change the master black. And now if I go to menu four, you see if I go to camera two and change the iris, it's happening for camera two. I could go to camera four and change the iris for camera four. And all this was made possible because we have device cores that you can download to your controllers. So on this controller and any other controller, you can download device cores. That means support. It's a device driver for ATEM switches, for Blackmagic cameras, for even other switches, routers, recording decks, processors of all sorts you find online and with the click of a button you can download this support to your device and configure all the uh, hardware control elements to uh, work exactly as you want it. Luckily we always supply great defaults. Those are the ones that I showed you today so it really doesn't take a lot of rocket science knowledge to get this rolling. It's really easy to get started but you get so much flexibility when you need it.